<laughs> silliest things that I've seen in a while, and that's actually saying quite some with this uh, particular analysis desk. So, an interesting matchup. It's already been an interesting day, but I think these last three games are actually going to be very good. Um, a lot is going to be settled right here. Nobody wants to end up 0-0. Uh, That's 0-2, oh, two, two, zero, two. sorry. That's going to be rough, isn't it? No. I mean, the thing is, like, Godsend is now carrying the Swedish flag in a way because Nip fell to Hellraisers. The other Swedish roster, the other Swedish team in this tournament so far, they are now 1-1, one one, Nip. So it's on Godsend now to avoid that trap and to actually, you know, keep carrying that Swedish flag at this yes. point. And Dignitas are obviously looking to do the same thing for the Danes. That's exactly right. I mean, again, you can only lose three games and then you're out. So everything matters, even if there's no semifinals or anything like that. It's all going to be important. And look at this, Godsend, they're starting on the CT, or sorry, on the T side, and they're setting up for what looks like an A execute. But look at the way Config and the Cajun are set up. So they're going to be in front of the smokes. Meg is going to be in the back line here, trying to see if he can do anything. Config going to be maybe the first point of contact, looking for the shot. Cajun going to get in his stead. They're actually walking in to a three-way cross for her. Config executing every last member of Godsend at the end for a triple kill. That's one hell of a way to get started. OK, then. OK, then. What was that? Like three clicks, three kills? That doesn't get any cleaner than that. Edders, he was there the entire time taking pot shots as well. And they were all so focused on Cajun's position. They were all like, all right, we'll just running like lemmings into that corner. Look at that. This is incredible. Oh. Yeah, that's a feel good moment. And that is the worst case scenario for Godsend as well. Config is one of the pillars of Dignitas. It's between him and Magis Boy. Between the two of them, they're the heavy hitters. You don't want Config getting a hot start and just wrecking you right from the start. No, he's very aggressive once he starts feeling good, especially on this map. He's all over the place. In the middle here, you just saw him running through the smoke to look into underpass, even though that is a potentially a big risk, giving up that M4, which is the only one they have on the team. But he doesn't care. Just going to go for the fight anyway. Godsend with no bomb plant have picked up armor and pistols too, and they would like to have an impact. They need, I think, at this point, at least two kills in the round. And uh, a bomb plant would be even better. Absolutely, like that's what it's all going to boil down to here for Godsend. Not even close to getting the bomb down in the first round, so they have to come up with something now. And so, well, I mean, they're not out of it yet. They still have the dig, as you can see. Schneider looking for that pot shot on Cajun right now, but he's not quite going to find it. The main concern for me is that they're out of utility, Godsend. And that's going to make their job so much more difficult now to get onto a bomb site. They don't have an easy flash. They just have to do it the hard way, and there you go. Higgins gets a little greedy, and he gets punished. Yeah, seemed like the sort of fight that makes really should win with that uh, from Ascos range. Oh, Snyder picking up the kill on Config too. That's now starting to hurt the Danish economy quite a bit. Flusher, easy enough pick up there. He actually hesitates just a bit, and MSL still going to get caught. Schneider finding a third headshot with the Deagle. Flusher out of bullets. He's going to be going down. Rubino looking for the shot with the USP. He's going to take it down now. 25 seconds for Schneider to make his way over and find Rubino, who might be able to save this team. Rubino's been playing very well in this qualifier so far. If he can continue here and get the triple and take out Schneider, that'd be amazing. But Schneider's picked up the FAMAS and he is getting closer. 10 seconds left now, moving towards the truck. He's got almost no time. I don't think he can reliably get the bomb. Oh no! He actually sees the feet, but he still loses the UMP. And look at Rubino. Man, he takes it personally. Uh, yeah, well, Rubino actually one of the heavier hitters so far this tournament for Dignitas. Yesterday, he had a fantastic start in the group phase. Well, I mean the group phase, the main event. It is pretty much one big group here to sort out who's going on to the major at the end of January and who's going home, who's going to get to watch from home. I mean, it's nice to watch from home, Anders, but not when you're a competitor. When you're a competitor, you want to be there on the main stage. Yeah, for this major qualifier, I mean, it's hell week um, pretty much here. Third round is coming up, and Dignitas, that took a huge cut into their economy. The most they have is on Rubina with $1,200, so they need to win this round flawlessly. No one can go down here. they got to keep every rifle alive. But it'd be important to see if they can do just that. Megis playing close to Shadow up on that little balcony. They've got a really good presence here at the A-bomb side. I don't think they're going to run into too much trouble. No. And while well, Megas is in the perfect spot to be facing off against Glocks, he's going to be more than happy to go in here. And actually keep looking for more. Two kills, three kills total with that MP9. And he even has time to reload if he wanted to, but he knows that Schneider's lit. Not going to get the kill, though. He gets body blocked by Config, who wanted to get a piece of that action as well. Lots of SMG kills this time around. Four of them total. That's a lot of money going into the bank. 5,200 starting off this round for uh, Megas there on your screen. So, I mean... Very solid start here for the Danes, for Dignitas. 3-0 lead after winning the pistol. And now we get to see what Godsend have in store for us here. They do actually manage to get a few more nades than I thought they would, to be frank.
So they have full smokes at least to work with here for an execute. Clearly uh, a competition between Magus and Config to get that last kill. That's kind of interesting. I mean, if if that's the atmosphere on the team that you feel so good that you can sort of have that kind of fun with your teammates, not necessarily a bad sign. It can obviously boil over to the point where it's it's too much and you're not taking the game seriously enough, but um, not quite yet. Good pick off early on from Cajun. Going to be taking out JW over at the B hallways. Leaves Godsen now in a strange position. A bit of an awkward spot. But, I mean, if we go back to, like, the formula, really, that was making Dignitas work tick and win tournaments, right? Win major tournaments as an epicenter, right? When they were really going against the best and beating them and hoisting that trophy, it was Config and Magisk. They led the way. Cajun, everybody else was there to support. They had their good games. But Config and Magisk were just bodying everybody. And so already, three very strong rounds for them. You're going to have to keep an eye on them here to see, because they're going to be so important for Dignitas to just pick up this win here versus Godsend. Oh man, Cajun almost got caught running back there. It's a shame MSL didn't see it coming now. Chronix goes down with the bomb. I don't know if Cajun saw that drop from the corpse, but it's four versus three at the moment. Flusher is sneaking into a great position over by the window. This can make the round for Godsend. If he can pick up the kill on Config here, but he's looking the wrong way, he's gonna get taken down. And now all hope has been extinguished here. Lecro and Schneider, I don't know how they're gonna get back into this. What a nightmare for Flusher. He was hoping that Dignitas had truly rotated over to that B site, hoping to catch them in the back. It just doesn't play out. And now a two-man advantage here for Dignitas. Bomb has rotated back through Connector, but Magisk and, well, Config are both here in CT. And it's going to get spotted immediately as well. So they can even put some pressure. Lecro is just going to take the fight. Oh, big spray from him. Only picks up the one kill, but Schneider is able to convert. And now it's a one-on-two retake here for Dignitas. They lost both of their players. Whoa. What a headshot to take down Rubino. That came out of nowhere just as smoke evaporated, but he can't get the follow-up. That would have been great. But nearly a triple kill for Schneider then, but Cajun will save the round. These are so close. This is now the second round where Dignitas has survived with only one member. It means they're not building almost any economy, but still, Godsend aren't winning the rounds. And if you look at it, it's Schneider with six and four, and then it's one on Lecker, one on Flusher, one on Pronax, and zero on JW. So somebody's got to help out Schneider here. Yeah, they need to start waking up. I mean, Godsent haven't had the best results lately. It's definitely been a struggle for them after the whole fanatic Godsent split, the shift. Crims going back, trading Crims back for Lecro. So Crims is reunited once again with Olaf. I mean, this uh, this Swedish scene going from some of the most dominant players in CSGO history to really struggling to even qualify for events. I mean, it's been a real shock to the system for Flusha, for JW, even for Pronax, and he was cast out into the wild for a bit. It's true. Now, do they have what it takes to sort of mentally bring it back and, and really keep fighting for it? That's the big question, and I think they do. It's just that they need to find the right spirit again. Maybe it's been lost for a little while. Magus, who was alone for a long time here, actually got sent slowing down that push, helping him out a bit. Good flashbangs coming in. Magus can't find the kill, though, but Lecro and JW most certainly can. Magus out of bullets, didn't get the reload in time. Gonna get the kill with the pistol. That's not enough. Cajun in a one on three. He makes it a one on two. He gets the one kill. Flusher's up there. And now he's getting shot at from the middle as well. Cajun gets the kill, now controls the bomb, and it's a one on one. And did he realize that there was a man on short, or was he that did. a teammate that called it? But I think there were some shots there from JW, and that gave it away. So Cajun, he's got the positioning now as well. He knows where that bomb has dropped, and he has an idea of where JW needs to come from. And he Ooh. thinks that JW went into jungle, is playing from a different angle. JW is going to be coming up through connector here in a moment. And Cage has only got 12 HP. He can't afford to make a mistake. But it must just, it, oh, he actually misses it. Imagine. Cajun, Cajun would have been perfectly positioned to shut him out from there. He misses it, but he shoots in frustration, and he can hear that, Cajun. He couldn't have heard the fall, but he could hear the, sh the shot coming out, and that's actually a problem. Look at Cajun. He's got the perfect angle. Timing is everything here, 28 seconds. He's looking the, exactly the right way, though. JW has moved back into connector. 20 seconds here. He can't waste any more time, and Cajun knows it. He can just hold this angle. There's nothing that JW can do. He's going to go down. One versus three for Cajun B to save it. Another round where Dignitas are down to one on one, and they still win it. This has got to grind Godsend right now. That's yeah. three rounds out of the five that Dignitas have won that ends in a one on one. Yep, that's, that's the main thing to take away from this now. I mean, another round where it just doesn't work. Even though they had, a, it seemed like they had such a strong start, Godsend, in that round. They were trading effectively. They were grouped up. They didn't really let Magus get too much out of his position in Shadow. And they were able to trade to get the man advantage. But then, obviously, yeah, Cajun with the op. The main thing there is just that, yeah, Godsend now, their me mental game is going to be in tatters. That's three very close situations where they feel like perhaps they should have had it.
But that's that also makes me worry just a little bit about Dignitas. I mean, you can't count on winning clutches every day. These rounds are way too close if you're on CT side Mirage. Yes, and I mean, did you notice how Magus, sure he got flashed, but he had plenty of time to reload. He didn't really have to overextend in that fight. He seemed really rattled, you know. Instead of just taking the time, reload that M4 and go for the fight again, he sort of fun just fumbled the whole thing and it, it became really odd. So I kind of agree. They are on the edge, Dignitas, still, even if they're winning these clutches. Flusher, the one over at A making noise, while it's obviously going to be a B attack here. Hoping to find some kind of reaction. There is a man waiting sandwich. That's Magus holding close again. But in the meantime, God sent. They've gone back to a strategy that they used before. Cajun was there to shut it down the last time around. MSL, though, going to get overwhelmed. Double entry kill coming in for JW. Two headshots, and that's a man advantage now for God sent. Bomb planted on the B site. Two players here for Dignitas, though, and look at this config. He's going to take a bit of a risk. He's going to catch Schneider looking the wrong way. Cajun takes down JW as well. It's a long-range fight versus Lecro. That's going to give it up, and, but he can't hit the shot, Cajun. No, that was the, the kill they needed right there. Now, Magisk, he had to wait in that A-bomb side forever and ever because Flusher had made the noise early on. That's why Magis didn't follow the rotation for the rest of the team. So it sort of shows you that Flusher's role is fairly important in that round. Even if he doesn't get any kills, it still has an impact. But um, I think the real the real problem was that the crossfire between MSL and Rubino over at the bomb site just never worked out. You know, they got picked off one at a time when they should have had the engagement at a point where they could both shoot. You know, that it was just a bit staggered here. Well, we can watch it here. Rubino just decides to step wide as well. Yeah, that's tough. And MSL had been spotted before because he was obviously spraying at the guys on plateau. MSL off to a real cold start here so far on this map, I have to say. And imagine a world in which. Rubino doesn't step out until MSL is the one firing, right? Then yeah. suddenly the, the crossfire actually worked. It's just in the wrong order, essentially, which is a, a bit of a shame. It does give Gotsen their first round. Now they're five and one, and we're moving into the seventh round here with Cajun and the config on top of the scoreboard for Dignitas. And finally, Schneider's got some help as well. Now things get tricky because they did lose three players in the last round. They, ha they have almost no money on Gotsen's side. If they lose this round, they're going to be echoing again. And... Dignitas will be celebrating. Yeah, I think this is why Dignitas are calling for the pause right now, the timeout. They get four 30-second tactical timeouts throughout this map, and they used to they, they choose to use one of them because this is a swing round. This is where you're going to take a big risk. You're going for a force buy, and if you lose this, you might be egoing. But they know that Godsend's economy isn't much better either, so MSL just wants to make sure he gets get everybody calmed down going into this key round here. Seventh round, 5-1 lead for Dignitas, and they're putting everything on the line. Marcel and Rubino pushing aggressively over here, and JW is ready and waiting for him. He sees the jump, that means he's probably not going to expect that MSL is in that corner. Boosted up, that's so intelligent by Dignitas. And they're going to go for the fight. Rubino doesn't need any trickery to get that kill with the UMP. Grenade going to land right at the feet of Flusher, and that suddenly put us at a four on five here. Make is aggressively up in the A hallways. This is such a powerful position, regardless of what happens from here on out. As long as he doesn't turn his back to Schneider, he's going to be in a great position. This was a double push from him at the beginning of the round as well with Config backing him. And I like that. Config with the 5-7. If Magus goes down, he can pick up the M4, save that. Magus doesn't need his help, though. He's going to catch Schneider. But they have infiltrated three players up through Connector. Config holding close with that 5-7, though. Double peak. Good teamwork coming in here from Godsend. But Cajun's still alive on the site, and they know that Magus is up in Palace. This is a tough situation now for Godsend. They have to find a kill. And they nearly had it there. Now that drops the bomb at Cajun's feet. Look at Magus, he's challenging the scope, walking right in, he gets a shot on Flusher, and now Lecro alone, almost getting sprayed down then, he's in a one on two, actually one on three. Cajun's still alive on an eight health. That bomb being dropped over by CT spawn is a big issue right now. Lecro, you can sneak around for another 10 seconds, but then you're gonna have to run for it, and he walks right into MSL, picks up the kill. That round for Magus, challenging that smoke. That's sort of an all or nothing play there. A tough. Very tough scenario there for him. I mean, that's that's all due to Dignitas refusing to really just bow down, actually. They're not caving under the pressure. Both Config and Magus con continue to hit their shots. And you got to give it to Cajun as well. Like, I think that Config and Magus might be higher if it weren't for Cajun also getting it on the action and taking a few kills away for him, from him. He's doing a fantastic job here. 6-1 lead now for Dignitas. And sure enough, Godsend have to go to, a pr to an eco round now. Pistols, couple of Kevlar, no grenades. Nobody investing in a, in a flash or smoke. So an easy kill for Config at top mid. He takes down Lecro. And now the rotation coming in from Godsent. Three players moving through underpass. They already have Flusher lurking over towards pit. And this will eventually wind up on that A site here for Godsent. 
And finally, maybe a round where Danish Husky come up with a lot more rifles. Their economy is still not great, even though they've been winning all these rounds. So they really need one of those rounds where they, they survive with four or five members and they can start to build a real bank. Because we've seen this before, uh, where you, you end up with 10, 11 rounds in the first half of this map on the CT side, and then T side, you don't get anything done. So they can't feel safe yet, even though they must be feeling pretty good about themselves. It's too early to celebrate. Schneider going to be going down, fed right into config in that window, and he's going to put up a Molotov and a flashbang. Is he really going to go and fight them afterwards? No, okay. He takes the safe way out. He's so bold, <laughs> config. Why are you doing that? <laughs> it's just like a clench from it. You see it coming. Nearly got the angle down as well. And then he's going to punish JW for being greedy after all. Pro and Axe and Flush, the last two alive. He has no idea that Flush is on short, though. But Config playing it so well. Doesn't overextend. Doesn't peek into the unknown. Doesn't give it, uh, more importantly, doesn't give Flusha or Godsent, rather, as a whole, the chance to return the kill. So very calm, composed play here coming in from Config. He'll eventually find Flush as well from a different angle. And a flawless anti-eco round coming through here for Dignitas. Excellent work in the end. Yeah, just very well done. 7 1. And Godsend, even if they had the bomb plan in this round, they wouldn't have been able to buy it. So they're going to have to go for sort of another half buy here. Yeah, this position could could have ended badly for Config at least. But um, he plays it flawlessly. Look at this. Never peaks, never overextends, makes use of his utility. Did they, did they try and toss a pistol up to him? <laughs> oh, take the pistol. It was obviously the swag fake. <laughs> All right, <laughs> trying to bait some kind of response. Ah, cool, we're gonna have Waterfall here. All right, so four players, Palace, and they're just gonna try and Waterfall off the balcony straight onto the site. Magus holding close. This is actually a bit risky for Magus. With P250s, they, get, uh, they could get a lucky headshot, and they're running right at him, and he eventually runs out of bullets. They get the bomb on down, actually. JW's inside the smoke, and he's gonna get the pump. That's everything they wanted out of that round, and more. They got the double kill as well. Big success round coming out of Godsend, and very decisive play there. No one seemed to hesitate, so they're just going to go all in. And that means now they're going to have so much money to work with, with that bomb plan as well. Everybody, uh, at, well, nearly everybody at 6,000 or more. So they can buy whatever they want in this round. What can they make of it? They seem to get mid-control mm. easily enough on the godsend side. Mm -hmm. And normally the, 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 the bonus of doing that is you can keep the CT side guessing between whether or not it's going to be an A or a B attack, right? You, they, they don't quite know unless they go aggressive on, on those extremities. But um, even that could force them to do it. You could set a trap for them by taking them in control and hoping that they will push for information somewhere else. So they have that benefit. They're just not using it for anything. Oh, well, now we actually might have some mid-challenge coming through. Nope. Config, after checking underpass, decides to back off. It looks like he doesn't want to stick around too long. A bit too much of a presence from mid from Godsent. They get the short smoke down fairly early. Two players behind boxes at top mid now. And while well, Config just kind of sits and waits at this point. No real chance to go for the aggressive mid push. In the meantime, JW waiting for MSL to go for a push over here in B Hall. Sometimes MSL likes to go for that kind of aggressive play over here. Config getting caught. Flusher realizing that he likes playing in that connector. That's a very important kill. Leaves Config, oh sorry, Cajun and Magis at the A bomb side. And actually, that's enough of a weakness that they're going to charge Rubino over here, JW. Toying with Twitch chat, do you think? I think. I oh, he gets that kill! MSL! It's like he felt the scope on the other side of the wall. <laughs> the heat. Yeah, wonderful stuff. That is actually just hilarious. Rubino gets legged as he tries to make the jump across, and Godsender obviously going to win the round. You can see already Dignitas are on the retreat, so very well done for the Swedish side. I, love, I just love everything about that. That's just JW getting the read. I mean, you know, if I'm saying, well, MSL likes to play from that sort of position, I mean, it is true that MSL does like to play balcony, does like to go for aggressive pushes, B-Halls. If JW's done his homework with, with Pronax on the team, you should hope so. The thing is, the best version of, of that replay would have to feature the simultaneous Twitch chat, because you just know what the, sp <laughs> the spam is going to be. Oh, I love it. I'm just glad to see JW hitting some shots with the AWP. I mean, he's, he really feels like, um, for him, Personally, he's been he's admitted in an interviews right where he's been struggling to find his style. I mean, this used to be one of the most explosive offers up there. Not quite. I'd say Kenny had a higher impact, but up there, there was a long period of time where he was just a you know a force of nature with that op. Never was he was just had perfect movement, allowed him to get around the map so quickly, and then just you know land shots. This was much more of a passive style, but he used to just go all out aggressive with the AWP, be ultra aggressive with it. That's just very funny, isn't it? 
8-2, the scoreline, 11th round is coming up here. Finally, some traction for Godsend. Also around that they win fairly convincingly. Can they do it again? Rubino looking to challenge in the middle. Those bullets not hitting anything at all. So um, instead, it's going to be over by the ramp here. Config and Magus both pushed up. Oh, no! That's a team kill. Schneider taking out his own captain. That's Mutiny. And it's going to be four versus five at the end of it. Grenade lands right on Magus. Schneider making up for it. That was a perfect dunk. I wish we could see that from a different angle because I think he practically caught that with his head. Now what do they do? They've got mid control, they've got apartments. They could set up for a very nice A push here. Ah, but there it is. Config asserting his will. Takes down JW in Palace and that actually removes one of the flanking elements here from Godsense offense. Counting on JW, kind of hold that line towards jungle, towards connector with the op. You can usually find people kind of peeking over there for info. Perfect place to have an op, but this time around it does not pay off. And so a man advantage now for Dignitas. Still plenty of utility for Dignitas to use as well. 50 seconds left on the clock. They have quite a few grenades. Lecro ready, waiting. A huge off angle for Rubino. That's not a place you would normally stand, but Lecro, he almost adjusts anyway. That's quite impressive. Flush are going to get the kill blind on Rubino. And now Config on the site. He needs some backup here. They're playing a 2v3, only has to lose by time. And I think Godsend have realized that that's why they're pushing up so aggressively. Good move from Flusher. Gets him a double kill. Now two on two. With 30 some seconds left, well, just 25 now. The bomb, can it be planted? Flusher goes down and Schneider almost falling. It's all on him now. This is all down to timing, really. MSL steps in, Schneider hits the headshot. And that's a bit of a problem because Cajun wasn't quite in position and now he's going in with that uh, pistol, but it's not gonna be good enough. Schneider holding the angle, sees him coming from a mile away, takes advantage of the smoke, then narrows down Cajun's options and Schneider was in the perfect spot to capitalize. Schneider though, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about config Magis for obvious reasons, but Schneider, he feels like the one who's really trying to make the difference right now for Godsent. Yeah, that was a very impressive end to that round. Also, if you notice at the end, Cajun had two flashbangs, one smoke, I think. So he, he could have tried to make it a bit harder on Schneider, maybe, but he just wanted to go for it and it didn't work out. What a great clutch. Schneider now in the ready, in the middle, sort of ready and waiting. He actually got that shot on config. He did the damage there, just doesn't do a, too much through the wall. This is interesting. Godsend, you can tell they're starting to gain the momentum and they're feeling a little bit better about themselves. Similar setups to some of the previous rounds here for Dignitas. Exactly. Pronax is the one occupying B halls this time around. Hoping to catch somebody out. Looking for that aggression from MSL. Perhaps for Rubino to go for the jump. Not going to happen. And instead, Godsend have pretty much gotten mid for free at this point. And Schneider holding the angle towards window takes down Config. So there's the man advantage for Godsend. The pressure is going to start mounting on Dignitas in this round because once again, Dignitas, they've tapped out. They've used all their money. This is an eco situation now for Dignitas. If they lose this, and now they're down two men. Bomb rotation is coming back towards A side, however, and Cajun's holding close. Maybe he can make the difference. And this is great. Godsend now are just playing a game where they're waiting for Dignitas to come and push aggressively, and then they take them out. Cajun gets a double kill, but it won't matter. It's too late in the round. That's really good if it happened in the beginning, but now it's still a one on three for MSL, and the bomb is seconds from going down. Oh, they actually plant right in front of him. This is dangerous. MSL gonna pick up the one kill, and now a one on two. He's gonna try and flash his way in. They're right there ready and waiting for him, and Schneider with another triple kill, making it 12 overall for him. This is great. They know that Config and Magus both like playing fairly aggressively, so they wait for them, and especially in a, four, in a 4v5, after they get the kill on Config, they can predict that someone else will try and make a play, which is why when Magus pushes into the A hallways, they're sort of ready for it. I really like it. That's just experience. Experience making the difference. The feel of it as well. But Schneider, the first man to get into double digits on the scoreboard here for Godsent. 8-4 lead for Dignitas, and Lecro picks MSL out of the air. And yes, it is an eco round here for Dignitas, so they are looking for some aggression. Config holding close and underpass, and Flush is just gonna run right over him. No problem at all for him. Godsent, this is their round to shine. It's gonna be a feel good, it looks like it's gonna be a feel good one for them too. Not even Mega's gonna be able to put an end to it. Not losing anyone yet. It's a flawless round from their point of view. That's the fourth in a row that they've won. Their economy is starting to look up. The Davis has thicker buy in this round, but still, you have to assume that they know they've turned the corner now. 5 8, the scoreline. Last two rounds, if, I mean, if they even win one more round, this is a huge success, I would say, for, uh, for, uh, for Godsend. They should be feeling very confident at this point in time. 
Yeah, Dignitas is sure to know this as well. They're, they're on the limit right now. If they can turn this 10-5, it's a very successful CT side. They're going to be feeling very good going into the second half. If it ends 9-6 or, well, you know, God permit, 8-7, eight, seven. Eight, seven. then, uh, yeah, God sent the Swedes are going to be looking great. And there we go, that mid-aggression coming out. No fear. Config and Rubino picking up two kills. Man advantage now for Dignitas in the key round. And JW even taking some fire damage up here in the B halls. Good sign that Dignitas don't just sort of rinse and repeat the same strat over and over. But look at this, Schneider. Ever the ace up the sleeve of Godsend, just making it work. Config and MSL are left here, two on two. But that should have been an easy round. They were just in a four on two. It seems like every time things go off the rails for Godsend, they just pull out Schneider on this map and he makes it work. Tough position here, though, because MSL's rotating over. They're going for a gamble, Dignitas. They think that this is going to wind up on the A site, and unfortunately for them, God Center one step ahead, bringing that bomb over towards B. Buddy system in play, JW and Schneider. But because oh. of the health, I mean, look at this. There are two HE grenades left on Dignitas, and look at the health on Godsend. Whatever site they end up at, if they if they put, start planting the bomb, they could end up getting exploded. Dude, Config. Wow. He's literally been staring here for like 30 seconds now. Oh! <laughs> I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> well, they're going to boost up into the window. This is brilliant. He might still be able to get a kill on Schneider. Timing is everything right now. 30 seconds, and there it is. Now the bomb is in the window, and JW alone is going to wrap back onto B where MSL is holding. It's almost like Dignitas are just uh, finding a lot of luck right now, though. He's making a lot of noise here, and JW will get the kill. It is not over yet. Config versus JW in a one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to plant the bomb in a very good position. No matter where he goes, this is going to be a good bomb plant for him. And Config is going to wrap around. No, he actually... Oh, he gets the jump. I thought he fell off for a second there. But um, now, it's all on JW. With the gamble, with the read attempt here. Seems like when he sees that short with so little time left on the bomb, and when the short is clear, he's going to be in position to actually shut Config out. But Config still has a smoke. And JW only with the AWP. He has a P250, though, so he, has, he does have some spray potential. And he needed to hit that shot, and he does. Config, another mid-air shot here. And it's going to be six rounds on the board for God sent another 1v1. All of these rounds are so close, Anders. But when it really matters now for Dignitas, I mean, it matters obviously at the beginning, but now towards the end when they have the difference between a very successful first half and well, a much more narrow one, they're, they're not managing to actually make the 1v1s work for them. The clutch situations are going God sent's way. Yeah, that, I mean, there were so many odd things about what just happened. I realized that when Schneider goes down in the middle, they probably think that they were headed A, but why does MSL feel the need to move that much? There's only 18 seconds or something when he's running into Kitchen. I would probably say waiting would have been the smarter choice then. That's a big risk to take. Now it looks like an A attack. Vegas with a great flashbang. If they can't find the kill, a Pronax! Going to take down his own teammate in Flusher. That's not ideal. And Config now angry from the last round. Going to turn up. It gets a double kill and could very well be a triple. Pronax in the corner. With a very low on health. And JW, I don't know if he can get here in time. If Pronax loses the bomb, JW may be good, but he shouldn't be able to do this one on three. Well, that certainly worked out for him. Config just zeroes in on Pronax. Hmm. 1v3, minute left. And JW playing static right now, hoping to catch somebody out. This is not the f most fun way to end the round. It almost looked like Magus was going to... I mean, he did so much damage, but it looked like they were going to be able to just get the refrag and move on. Until that team kill also happened. Not going to work for JW. He goes down to Rubino. And that will be 9-6 for the first half here on Mirage. And I just want to point out, that's 15 rounds played. And Config is at 21 kills. That is how crazy this first half has been for him. The closest right now is actually Schneider on Godsend, who's at 16. So he's been doing a fine job. And uh, Pronax continuing to have a bit of a hard time here. He's at 4, 1, and 13, you know? Um, definitely a tough game for him at the moment. Now, this Pistol, is, yeah. Pistol, the second half is going to mean everything, isn't it? This is really tough, though, because, I mean, this, is, this brings you kind of back to what was happening with Nip versus Hellraisers earlier on Overpass, where it was Exist, the Exist show. He had, like, 21 kills, 22 kills by the 16th round. I mean, but then the rest of his teammates, nobody there to join him. There's only so much one guy can do, and he will eventually kind of, you know, the adrenaline's going to start wearing off a little bit. He'll start missing some shots, and if the rest of his team aren't there to back him up, this could turn into a very close game. You really need Confid to kind of just hit that God tier level right now and carry God, get Dignitas through this pistol round and get them a very strong lead here in the second half. 
But it was a nice opening from Rubino. He just taps JW in the face with a Glock. If it had been a USP, that would have been an opening kill. But Glock's a little bit different in that sense. Now they've got the mid control sneaking up under pass, and they can all connect in that A bomb side. Schneider on the stairwell. Oh, JW with almost no health still saves his teammate. That's so big. Now Cajun trying to follow it up, but Schneider's going to stay alive. And Flusher coming up with two big kills. MSL all alone. This is a huge round coming out of Godsend. If JW doesn't get that headshot immediately, F Schneider is gone. He's just going to get overrun in that connector. And then probably the round immediately will go to Dickensart. That's such a big kill. High impact frag. MSL turning his back. And Necro hiding right there. Big round for Godsend. There's that heart attack moment for MSL. I mean, when the guy's right behind you like that to start shooting point blank. Flusher, though. Two monster kills there as well to follow up on JW's save. Well, Dignitas, that is that is not the result they were looking for considering how close the first half was. They needed that pistol to really start off strong here. Now it's going to be 9-7, God sent. They're going to go three UMPs, okay. But JW again with the scoped rifle, love it. Want to see him on the sniper rifle more often. He needs to be that primary opera for God sent. Return to the JW of past, the rebirth, Anders, come on. Absolutely. He was such a force uh, back then, and I still think he could be. His style always revolved uh, basically around having the confidence to challenge the smokes and just generally do crazy things. Maybe we could see it again. Lecro needing some backup, and Flusher is here, but they have armor and tech lines on the other side. you got to be careful. The Molotov kill coming in from Flusher, and Lecro holding his own just fine in the bomb side. Getting a couple of kills in triple, in fact, and no impact along this round for Dignitas. In spite of the fact it looked like the timing was great, it didn't look like Lecro and Flusher could really help each other out too much because of the smoke that was going down. Mm -hmm. And yet, they didn't lose a single player. Yeah, this was a flawless hold, actually. I thought the Lecro would get rushed for sure. A little bit of hesitation there, and that ended up costing Dignitas. They were just one after another. That's such an ideal situation, right? He didn't face two guys with Tech Nines at the same time, so while he's trying to spray one, the other one's shooting him in the face. He was able to just pick them off at his leisure, one after another. And God sent one round closer to tying things up here in the second half. Nine to eight for Dignitas, but a hard ego coming in here for Dignitas. And they're going for a waterfall of their own straight off the A balcony onto the A site. And they're not going to get close. They're getting clotheslined. Pronex with the UMP still alive, just buying so much time. Perfect hold, back-to-back -back flawless anti-ecos for Godsend. You think about how many rounds in the first five rounds for Dignitas House were down to a one-on-one, -on -one, whereas Godsend are already building a fairly strong economy here, nearly 7,000 on Flusher. That's really good. That's going to help them out. Now the Dignitas House finally have rifles, including, and I must point this out, it's no joke, Magis with the SG-553. <laughs> it's He has made this work to a ridiculous level. Uh, so, I, I'm, there's no joke, his headshot ratio with this gun, last time he used on a Mirage was out of this world. So you can laugh all you want, but let's just wait and see if it works. That was the last time we saw him at E-League, and he was laughing too. He was like, it works. I use it all the time, and it's great. Love it. So I'm just like, yeah, fair enough. I mean, it's, it's got 100% accuracy on that first bullet. So if you're looking for the one taps, maybe Scream should take some lessons. This is the other thing, even without the scope, just a normal spray for this gun, um, it's actually incredibly easy to predict does monster damage as well. It's so easy. It's it's just the first 15 bullets or something are just, you know, down to the left. It just It's it's actually unreal. But um, not many people use it. It's just because it's more expensive. That's the thing. Costs more money. You're converting a couple of grenades more into just into into one rifle, right? When an AK, boom, config, demonstration right there. The headshot is still possible, right? And it's still a one-shot headshot. But in this round, right, we're having a discussion, but Dignitas have just methodically picked apart the God Sent defense in this A tank. MSL gonna get greedy and peeks into Lecro, so now we're into a 1v3. But I mean, wasn't a huge risk because, like I said, 1v3. Cage and Rubino and Meg is still alive here to lock down the A site. It's just so hard to, it's hard to hold that A bomb site when you lose mid control and you only have two people on the site. Unless you get the opening frag when the next engagement happens, you, you probably will just lose immediately because there's too many angles to cover all at the same time. Lecro doing a smart job just trying to... If they try and hunt him, he's in a good position to make sure he gets the kill. And if they don't, then he's just going to save the rifle. So the first buy round here for Dignitas, and it's a success already. That's big news. The money, though, for Godsend is still there. They can still buy. Hmm. Looking to see. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they can comfortably buy. They even have the option. They could go for double ops if they wanted to. 
That is a nice setup. That is actually a pretty sick setup. I really like that. It's also, curved screen and everything. Who keeps their apartment that clean? I realize it's a new apartment, but still, get some get some mess in there, you know. <laughs> what what kind of what kind of gamer has an apartment like that? Only for like a day or something. It's like the wireless mouse keyboard setup, you know. I, I dig it. I dig it. That, that's comfort right there. Throwback to the good studio. That's how we had our setup in the living room. <laughs> I I think it looks smooth. I like it. Pronax is holding over by the A-bomb site. He's alone, in fact. Schneider, though, not that far away. And JW in the window with the AWV. I wonder if he can find a kill early on. This is an easy tool to use if you want to try and deny the mid control for the terrorist side. As long as they don't easily smoke him off, they're going to be jumping around back there. Not seen anyone yet. There comes the smoke for the middle. He's trying to get the shot through and not quite connecting. And he gives up on that hunt, which uh, is reasonable. Now, underpass being cleared up by Magus, while the rest of his team is taking mid control and caging up in apartments. This could be another really powerful A hit. If Schneider and JW go down in this connector, that's going to be the end of it. Yeah, it's going to be very scary. And JW still playing patient, but now he's kind of missed his chance for targets. There might be a boost coming out here from Dignitas. Magus, the jump, and JW hits the flick. Wall bang, no less. And Schneider with the peek as well. He has, he's got to be careful. As long as they have the man advantage here, Godsent, they can definitely hold on. But if he starts taking unnecessary risks, he will get run over. MSL finds that kill, but Flush pushes short aggro and picks up the last two kills. The collapse there onto mid from Godsent, just crushing Dignitas. 10 10 tied up. And that resets the economy now for Dignitas. It's very well done. I love the aggression, especially after they get this first kill here. They just follow it up, they just keep going. Not allowing any kind of space. JW with the first two, but then Flusher, this kind of a follow-up here. And you can tell Rubina was flashed as well. He had no idea what was coming. Got to say, though, that's JW again hitting shots at the op. And they just need to maintain yeah. now at this point. Config taking point towards Pit, and this is going to be that A play, it looks like, from Dignitas. Bomb up in apartments as well, three players there. And so Dignitas was looking to split onto the site. They had a window where there was only going to be Pronax alive on the site, but now JW is back. Gets the smoke, but it's a second too late. And now there's a timing opportunity here for Dignitas to run onto the site. And you can see, sure enough, JW doesn't want any of it. Backs off. Oh, but Pronax stays alive back there. And the bomb and not going to go down. It's so close. Cajun trying to make it work. It doesn't quite happen. And now 11-10. Godsend have taken the round lead. And they're looking very good right now. I would say they're in, a, they're in route to win this map. What can Dignitas has to do? Timeout seems to be the the flavor of the of the match here. Hey, you have to give it to Godsent. They're doing a very solid job here. I mean, yeah. that's, this is where you're starting to see them start to get warmed up a little bit. I mean, Pronax still struggling somewhat, but when you've got Schneider and Flusha both kind of leading the way right now, these are where the pieces are starting to fall together or like fit together for Godsent. Schneider, Flusha, JW, Lecro. I mean, everybody's kind of hitting their shots now for Godsent. So this is definitely looking good for the CT side. They've got the setups, they seem to be working, and they're making good decisions as well, as we just saw from JW there. Rather than risk getting run over by a bunch of pistols, backs off, lets the rifles get into the fight, and then once it's kind of calmed down a little bit, boom, go for the retake with your mates. Very solid work. That's snap decision-making. That's just, that this has to happen. Now I'm curious. When your opponent takes a timeout like that, you can either just play your default, you know, relax, defensive, wait, and see what they're gonna, what they've come up with in the timeout. You could also try and take it away from them. You know, you know they've got some sort of plan going into this round. Maybe you just try and see if you could do it differently. But look at this. They actually tried to get the mid-control godsend at the exact same time as Dignitas have gone for a full A execute. The timing could not possibly be worse for godsend. Now they're in a full five-on-five -five retake. This is really tough. And Meg is He's going to be running back through T-spawn. This is a nightmare scenario for the Swedes. No grenades. No grenades for Dignitas, though. Look at all the nades that Godsend have to use for this. They shouldn't feel pressure. They have five kits. Just get your nades into play. Force Dignitas out into the open. And there you go. Pronax roasts Rubino with one incendiary. There's another one in play on Flusha. He's chucked it somewhere. They have all of these grenades to use. Godsend just have to get in here and make it work. Magus already going down from behind. Cajun trying to get a kill. He's alone, and he can only get the double. They're right on the bomb. They don't have that much time left, but it will be a defuse. They've got enough time for that. Great retake, and I mean, I, Magus, he got the first kill, and he kept pushing, and I, I feel like just get a kill in the middle and fall back. Let them be paranoid about the, the idea that you could get there, but that is not a bad retake, and you're absolutely right. The grenade count was definitely the key difference in, in getting that retake in. 
That's tough for Dennis House because that's a gift you will only get once every 10 maps or so. You, know, you can't just rely on running in to the A-bomb side unopposed. Yeah, when you get a freebie like that, that's just painful for Dignitas. If, if, if they even have a couple of flashes just to buy a little bit more time with, it's a different situation. But no grenades. You really felt it. And Godsend, again, with the economy established. Look at that triple nade. They don't care. Triple nade to top mid. Just looking to blow somebody up into oblivion from Dignitas. But Dignitas, in the meantime, I mean, one pit, one palace. And now looking for the aggro at mid, and that's going to work. Schneider catches Cage, and it's tough to figure out where this guy's coming from. Config eventually finds the shot. He gets the headshot first ah. with that Tech-9, but then gets burned alive by Flusha. <laughs> I mean, they got the one kill. Well, a follow-up there as well from Aegis, but still, not much else is going to happen. The bomb is in the middle. Just a question of Magus finding his end, and that was the hands of JW, who is clocking in at 14 kills. He's starting to get up there. I think he's reliably putting kills on the board now. That's the more important thing. 13 to 10, three more rounds, and Godsend will have pulled it back in style. I mean, this this is a really just a solid uh, second half for Godsend right now. Hey, this is where, you know, if you're JW and Flusha, this is where I want to see JW start to start to figure out, you know, that there was a time when Dignitas weren't even a threat. You know, the players on Dignitas for you, they were kids, right? You just, you ate them alive and then moved on to win in the tournament. <laughs> if Flusha and JW can, un you can just go back to those days where they were dominant, remember, how to make that kind of play happen where they, you just don't respect, you go through the smoke, you take the peak and be apartments, JW, and there you go, Magus is down. That's the kind of play that God sent, they have the players they should be able to do regularly. Just go and beat Dignitas up, be bullies. And it's no coincidence that they're doing it now that they're winning. It's the confidence that's starting to kick in. They realize they've got this in the back and now they're doing it. They should be doing it from the beginning, you're right, but it's always easier said than it is done. Cajun now. One on four turned into a one on three. Without the bomb, only thing that's working for him is the fact that he has a bit more than a minute left. But that is not much comfort, really. This is this is a very, again, the turn of pace and the aggression suddenly coming out of the Swedish side. Really well done on them. It's, it is pretty fun to think that God sent, I mean, Dignitas, no major wins on this side. God sent a host of major winners yeah. between Flusha, JW, Pronax, Schneider winning the first DreamHack winner 2013 major, the first CSGO major with Pronax, with pretty much this crew, minus Lecro. Devil Walk not playing these days, but he was on that roster as well. I mean, it's just so much history here, even in just this one team, CSGO history. It looks like Cajun has decided to just save the AWP, why not? But you are right, they have the experience. That's also why... I think for some time now, it's looked like they have had just no morale at all on this team, that that they give up mm. way before they need to. Cajun couldn't uh, keep his trigger finger there. Instead, takes out JW. They know where he is now. See if it's going to cost him not two seconds here before the time is up. Smoke goes up. Flashback as well. Cajun hiding in the corner. Oh, no. He can't make it. He's going to go down. Maybe if he hadn't shot that bullet earlier, he would have stayed alive. This is one of those scenarios where, you know, sometimes you hear us saying, well, maybe they should be man managing their money. Don't hunt, you know, just let them have the op. I mean, JW started this round with like 15,000 in the bank. It's like, actually, boys, go hunt. Just go get that op. Go hunt. You got more than enough money to full buy after this. Just but do whatever you want. What you were bringing up with the combined experience, just uh, now that we have another Dignitas timeout here. That's three timeouts used for Dignitas. That's three, you're right. They're, they're running out slowly. But the combined experience on this Godsend team means that they should be able to remind each other when things get really tough, which they were at the beginning of it. What is that? That's, That's more gamer-like. Such an elaborate setup. What's on the wall? Is that like a stereo or something? And you can tell that this guy isn't like a network engineer or anything because that cable management would basically make any one of them like throttle themselves with the thing. <laughs> yeah, I, want to, I want to make a joke with mine is far worse, but um, yes, you're right. Cable management. But yeah, when you have all this experience, you should be able to pull on that when things are rough. And it seems like it takes them a bit too long, you know? Like they're not really being good at reminding each other, look at this, you know, we've had all these years of experience. Of course we can bring it back. Now JW is in the middle looking for the shot for the smoke. They only have... A couple of rifles here on the Dingtar side, and instead they're going to try and speed up behind it. And this is interesting. JW already getting a kill. Magus with a refrag on Flusher. Still on CT spawn is Pronax ready and waiting, but he's smoked out for the moment. And that's a key kill coming in. Magus taking out Schneider. Yeah, some overaggression there from Schneider, actually. That's going to cost him because now that makes it very awkward. Config knows that the op is close as well. He heard that scope. 
So there's a lot of information for Dignitas to work with. Config going to find JW, but JW wins the duel. CZ75 up close. Not exactly the fight you want to take at point blank range. Lecro now pushing in from CT, looking to find the kill on MSL. And that is here. He's going to force MSL to take the fight. Who wins it? MSL, Rubino, Omega, everybody getting a kill at the end. And a successful hold here for Dignitas when they had their backs to the wall. 14 to 11 now. That's just a critical round on Amagus. He gets a triple kill, but more than that, if you notice Config, he had, what, 21 kills at the end of the half. Now he's at 24. He's only had three kills since the half turned, and that's a while ago. I mean, that's like, what, like nine rounds or more ago now? It's not good enough. And he, we've seen this before. I actually think this is a, a theme for him sometimes, is he will play much better on the CT side and come T side. He cools off a bit, um, so he needs to get just a couple of kills every other round and, and we'll be good to go. So he needs to wake up. Oh, there you go. He's going to open things up. He takes down Pronax, but Flush is there to trade versus Rubino in mid. And it looks like we'll have that full rotation coming out here from Godsend. They're not taking any risks this time. They know what's up. Going to be moving in to try and get onto the A site. Bomb planted now for Dignitas. But again, nade advantage here for Godsend going into the retake. Schneider wins the duel versus MSL. He's stuck in the corner, goes for the fight, but JW's there to back him up, and a man advantage now going into the retake for Godsend. Yeah, but this is bad. Cajun is in a really bad position up in those apartments. There is nothing he could do with that AWP. Look at the smokes going up. He has to run through, and as he tries to back out, he's just going to be going down. JW with a triple instead. That position Yee! is only good in a couple of cases. <laughs> Get on the bomb! For just a second, I thought, did you, like, roll over a gerbil or something for your chair? <laughs> like, <laughs> what is happening? I'm just seeing world where it's like, JW gets lost in the smoke, and his teammate is clearly like, it's over here, it's over here! JW had the kit! Just want to imagine someone accidentally brought, like, a hamster into the production studio. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, 15-11. This is getting out of control, and it has been for a while. Dignitas House in the second half, they've only won two rounds, and Godsend have just taken over the map here. One round away, they're at match and map point, and they're going to be able to make it. And three UMPs, one AK, one Tech-9. Dignitas House, they're getting into the A-bomb side and getting the bomb down, but that's not enough for them. No, they're having difficulty with the, the holds. It's Godsend, excellent nade usage. Dignitas always finding themselves lacking somewhat when it comes to actually holding. And while we haven't seen Dignitas go for a straight b hauls take like this just yet, or at least not for a very long time. So they're hoping to catch Godsend sleeping over here, but two players ready and waiting. Lecro full flashed, however. Perfect flash, but Flush is still alive on the site. He could take a second one here. Armagus going for the big spray. Agent getting the kill. I don't know how Meg is still alive. He's on one health grenade. He walks right into it, and that's going to be the end of him. Now it's a three on three. The bomb only just going down, and JW going to find the kill. That's a double. Very nicely done. He scopes, but he doesn't pull the trigger, and they can just wait. Schneider's only now just coming in from the catwalk. This could get very interesting. Dignitas, House, they're fighting for overtime right now, and JW, he's got one person pinned in behind the benches. That KJB, he's going to be going down now. MSL next in line, triple for JW, and they're finding the bomb. That's 16 11 in favor of Godsend here. What a huge comeback for the Swedish team, and finally, this roster is starting to make sense. That's just a total destruction. Two rounds picked up. Two rounds picked up in your T side.